it is that time of game, day again. It is storm time. So let's see where we have ended up in story time. So we did the snowman and now we are with Mr. Brown and the baby bear. So remember what our snowman looked like yesterday? Well, now we're looking at Mr. Brown and the baby bear. So get comfy and enjoy. Mr. and Mrs. Brown were teddy bears. They lived in a little cupboard in the playroom. They had furnished the cupboard home themselves with things that Mr. Brown had found while out walking. He bought back acorns for them to use as cups and soft feathers that he found near the duck pond to stuff cushions with. He'd made mirrors from old milk bottle tops and a broom from twigs that he'd collected. All their tables were made from little boxes. In fact, their cupboard was cluttered with the bits and pieces that he'd collected. And one day, Mrs. Brown decided that it was full enough. If you go out today, she said to Mr. Brown, then you are not to come back with anything. I shall check that your paws are empty when you walk through that door. Mr. Brown hugged her as usual and set off out of the cupboard, crossed the room, down the stairs and out into the garden. It was a lovely autumn day and a carpet of leaves covered the lawn. Mr. Brown thought it was great fun crunching through the leaves. He found some especially interesting ones, which he thought of taking home, but remembering Mrs. Brown's warning, he left them where they were. It's a pity, he said. I'm sure I could have made something with them. A little further down the garden, he found a bright, shiny brown conker. Oh, what a beauty, he said to himself as he bent down to polish the gleaming nut with his paw. The case it came out of must have been huge. And then he saw it, the biggest, most perfect conker case he'd ever seen. The inside was silken smooth and white and shaped like a round bottomed bowl. The outside was hard and, hard and covered in prickles. I'm sure I could put something in it, said Mr. Brown, but he remembered Mrs. Brown and sadly left it where it was. Mr. Brown continued down the garden till he came to the fence at the end. He was just about to turn and go back to the house when he saw a heap of leaves. They'd been raked up the day before and piled against the fence. Mr. Brown gazed at the heap and sighed. There was one thing he's always wanted to do and that was to jump right in the middle of the heap. <clears throat> a heap of dry, crunchy autumn leaves. Shall I? He thought to himself, just to see what it's like, to see whether it's soft or crunchy or bouncy. I must find out. And looking round to make sure nobody was watching, he climbed up on the fence above the leaves. One, two, three, he said out loud, and then he jumped. It was wonderful. The leaves were all crispy and they crackled softly as he sank gently, down, 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 into the springy heap. And then, when he stopped sinking into the leaves, Mr Brown heard a, heard a sound. Someone or something was very near him. Ow! Well, that wasn't me, said Mr Brown. I'm not her. Well, I am, said the little muffled voice. You're sitting on me. Mr Brown jumped to his feet and pushing his paw deep into the leaves, he pulled out the smallest teddy bear you've ever seen. Goodness, said Mr Brown. It's Toby Small. How did you get in there? Somebody took me for a walk and dropped me, said Toby Small. And then I was raked up with the leaves. I've been here all night and I'm cold and hungry. Well, Toby, said Mr Brown, I shall take you back to the house this afternoon. But first, I think I'd better take you to Mrs Brown so you can so she, you can have the leaves brushed off your fur. So Mr Brown picked up the little bear and carried him back to the house. On the way, he stopped to collect the big conker case that he'd found. He had, no idea, he had no idea now how he could use it without making Mrs Brown cross. Mrs Brown was waiting at the door of the cupboard when he arrived. Now, she said to Mr Brown when she saw the conker case in his paws, take that straight back to the garden, we don't need it. But we do, said Mr Brown, and he put down the conker case so that Mrs Brown could see inside it. There, laying fast asleep in the soft, smooth, white bed, was Toby Small. He was tucked up with sheets made from the brightest autumn leaves, and he was smiling happily. Oh, said Mrs Brown softly, I see, you couldn't really leave him outside, could you? and she carried the sleeping bear in his conker cot into the little cupboard house. When Toby Small had had, had a sleep and a meal, and his fur was brushed free of leaves, Mr and Mrs Brown took him home. And after that, he came to stay with them for his holiday, 
and they kept the clunker case for him to sleep in. Gradually, the cupboard has become more and more cluttered with things that Mr. Brown brought home from his walks, but Mrs. Brown never complained. We must have something for Toby Small to play with when he comes to stay, she said. And Mr. Brown just smiled. And there they are. Well, I wonder how big that conker case was or how small Toby Bear was. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And tomorrow we'll be looking at Hazel's Night Out. So I'll see you then. Bye.